This year, to celebrate Valentine's, Torchwood with Big Finish have been doing a trilogy of romantic-themed love stories. Back in February, we got to the last love song of Susie Costello, which starred Indira Varma returning to the role of Susie Costello. This month, we've got Thirst Trap, which stars Tom Price and Kai Owen as PC Andy and Gwen's long-suffering boyfriend slash husband, Reese. And we've also got next month, well, this month and now April, Torchwood Launch Date, written by Aaron Lamont and starring Gareth David Lloyd as Yanto. We're going to be talking about Thirst Trap today, though. This is a story that has been written by Tom Price, who plays PC Andy from the TV series. Now, PC Andy has basically had a brand new lease on life with the Big Finish Audio Adventures, often headlining several releases and box sets on his own. And I believe that this is maybe the first one that Tom Price has properly written for the Torchwood monthly range and basically the premise is this in Cardiff one night it's been a few weeks since the launch of a brand new dating app um, called Now or Never where basically you get a randomly assigned a date with somebody you've got 20 minutes to get there 20 minutes to fall in love and then you've got to leave otherwise the the app wipes your phone of all of the data and everything in it and then maybe if you're lucky you get pinged again to go on a second or possibly a third date but those things are very very rare and the Now or Never app is basically driving everybody do lally reese is actually going on a few blind dates with the app even though he's meant to be dating and he's meant to be gwen cooper's husband uh, and also refuses to look into the potential extraterrestrial element that is in the app now or never because he does not want torchwood to get involved lest gwen realize that he's maybe been seeing other people behind her back this is firmly a pc andy storyline where he's trying to figure out what's happening with the now or never app all of the police officers in cardiff are out doing blind dates everybody is succumbing to the gamification of the now or never app which results in this crazy phone call let's play a clip from torchwood thirst trap hello cardiff okay 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 sorry these calls shouldn't be coming through to my desk but mm-hmm uh, right 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 okay can you give me the address please uh, i just need a pen just putting you on speaker number 80 he's been alone for ages please hurry a baby's been left alone. Nearly two hours. He's only six months and he can't be alone. You have to hurry. We're on it, madam. I need your name and where you're calling from. No time. Haven't you listened to a word I've said? Is there crying? Can you safely enter the property? I'm not there, am I? I'm trying to get home to him, aren't I? I don't understand. I'm his mother. For the life of me, I can't find a bus or a taxi. And you want me to... I'm on my way. Thank you. Now this payphone's running out of credit. I'm on my way. I'm on. Ooh. Oh, look, I seriously need to put these bloody things off. Not now, now or never. It's definitely never. No way am I abandoning a baby to go on a di- Oh. So if the fact that this story revolves around PC Andy and also that really fun cover art didn't tip you off, this is less like Black Mirror and more just a partially farcical romantic comedy revolving around the sci-fi trappings of this app, which is creating a gamification effect for online dating i actually thought it was really tuned into the idea of like app dating online dating and stuff but also mixing it with pokemon go where you there's the physical element to it it's like you've got 20 minutes to get to the location for the date it will ping you randomly when something is happening nearby and then you've got these rare occurrences it's the gamification of dating and i actually thought it was a really fun bit of commentary pokemon go on a date thank you alex thank you um but what i will say i think that while it's really well written i think that it's very very funny and and also just the performances between like Tom Price and Kyo. And I think there's there's one of the funniest scenes that I've listened to in Big Finish for a long time. When both of them become partially under the influence of the app. Which makes them have a very loving attraction with each other. And the, you can tell that the two actors were having so much fun recording this. It is very, it's, it's knowingly campy. It's knowingly cheesy. And I loved just listening to these scenes. It's got a really, really fun like satirical edge to it. And I think that Tom Price's script is really well structurally assembled. There's only like five or six cast members over the course of the whole thing, a bit of multi-rolling going on. But it's it's just basically a farcical romantic comedy. I actually think that the MVP of this set, though, is Rebecca Traherne, who plays Anna, who's uh, Andy's date for the Now or Never app over the course of the evening. The only bit that kind of stretches credibility over the course of this story, though, is that it's meant to take place over the course of just one night. I think maybe it 
it should have been passed out over the course of a couple of days. But apart from that, it's a really funny hour of Torchwood comedy. And like I said, Rebecca Trahern plays this role of this counsellor who is like really kind of high up in the council, who is dating way below her station, but is in love with uh, with Andy because of the influences of the app and Andy's in love with her. And there's this really great fun dynamic. And you can tell that Rebecca's having so much fun with the material that she does have like an edge to the character, but she's having a lot of fun loosening up in the context of these dates. There's some really, really funny... Uh, dialogue it really does sparkle over the course of the story i think that tom price has got real great ownership and authorship of the character he's been playing him for so long on both tv and also in these big finish audio productions so to have him actually write a story revolving around him and also to a lesser extent reese trying to stop this death by love alien invasion through the app or whatever the end result turns out to be it's it's a lot of fun i i enjoyed thirst trap a lot i think that it's really interesting that they've gone for this approach with this love trilogy like the last love song of Susie costello is a really good and intimate character piece it's a really good hour-long drama trying to get under the skin of Susie costello towards the end of her torchwood career and thirst trap is just like completely in the opposite direction where you've got like you know Andy uh, is like well into his his sergeant career and Gwen and uh, and Reese have been married for a long time you know th this is like further in into the future of Torchwood than the TV series and it's just a it's a it's a romantic comedy unabashedly i think that the resolution is a little bit hurried like i said the main issue is that all of the events of the story are truncated over the course of a single night which kind of st it stretches the credibility somewhat especially regarding just the the idea of going on second or third dates but because of the structure of the story they happen on the same night like you go to a now or never date you have the date, you leave, and then you get pinged for a second date later that night. Like, obviously, it's a fictional app. It's an alien invasion pressuring people into dating and stuff like that. But it's even then, I still think that slightly stretched the credibility. However, if you can overlook that, first traps a fun time, great performances all around. Like I said, I think that Rebecca Trehearn is like the MVP. And you know what? The way this box set ends, I hope she comes back. I want to see more of the adventures of of, uh, of Sergeant Andy and Counselor Anna and see what adventures and malpractice they get up to, I guess, as, as, uh, as, uh, as employees of the, of the local council, employees of the state. But yeah, it's fun. The social commentary feels on point. It's less Black Mirror and more Red Dwarf in terms of the sci-fi approach to, to comedy and technology and satire and things like that. It was a really good vibe for the middle of this love trilogy. And like I said, that scene when <laughs> there's one line when Reese is like, do some damage, when he's saying it in like a flirtatious way. You could tell that these two are having so much fun in the recording booth. I I want footage of these two recording that scene together. It's a lot of fun. The the timing's great as well. Just the the snappy back and forth editing of the dialogue and just how 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 well it ends up resolving itself towards the end, apart from the truncated aspect of the structure. But yeah, Thirst Trap's a really good time. I'm looking forward to launch date, which comes out later on in April, uh, where Yanto is... This looks like a more action-centric one. Of course, I don't, I've not listened to the trailer. I've not listened to this release yet. But if we've got the intimate character drama piece, we've got the romantic comedy, this might lay somewhere in between or maybe be a good complement to the other two either way. But yeah, launch date, I'm looking forward to that. But Thirst Trap was a really, really fun time. If you like your audios uh, and your sci-fi comedic, if you like your Torchwood a bit silly and campy, then this is a pretty easy recommendation.